Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Blender 2.91.0 beta is officially here. And fun fact, Blender 2.92.0 alpha has now been announced. And this is this is very interesting because you can already tell that there is a couple of developments that will be coming over to Blender 2.92 as the file sizes already are beginning to look different. You can see this is 199 megabytes and this is already 200.77 megabytes. So, Without further ado, we're going to dive directly into Blender 2.91. We've talked about a lot of features that are coming, but of course there are some very tiny little cool stuff that they've added. So without further ado, let's dive directly into Blender 2.91 and take a look. So with Blender 2.91 open, you would notice that the splash screen looks different. A huge shout out to Robin Train for making this possible. And the splash screen kind of talks about almost everything that you can now do in Blender and it's very interesting to see that we have this. So for the updates, there are some things that are now added to this beta tool. So if you go over to file and go all the way to open recent, if you hover your mouse across, you can now tell where your file is saved, the date it was made, and the time itself, and funny enough, you can see the file size. This will save you time. It will save you prediction time. You can now estimate how long your file is gonna take to load and stuff like that. Another thing that is also very interesting to see is I think the guys at Blender Foundation are going with some sort of monochromatic look or some monochrome kind of look because if you simply click on the Blender icon and go to About Blender, you notice that this looks like this. So last week they changed it to something like this as well. So I think they're getting rid of all of those bright colors and they're putting just monochrome colors to these things for this particular moment. So something else which is also interesting to see is previously if you want to switch your viewport, you just simply select these and you select something else. But now you may have noticed that it is now being categorized. So we have a categorized list and the way the layout looks now looks even way better than what we used to have we already talked about some pretty cool tools before that they implemented one of them was with the uv and i think we talked about this one last week that once you go over to your uv editor you can now see that there is an overlay and this overlay is pretty interesting to work with and i love the fact that they added that you can also now display stretch so if an object is stretched to something you can display the stretch based on angle and also based off area and it's just it's just interesting you know it's just very interesting most of you guys may have seen our updates of weekly stuff which we're also going to be having sometime within the week and we have also seen that within this previous weeks we saw the property search come to life but what is new here is the property search is even way better than what we thought it was going to be so if you click on the property search right now and type the word sample so let's go with that you can now see that the tabs that are active are the tabs that are relative to what you're searching for so if i go over to the rendering section i can only see what i need to deal with so if i'm looking for anything that has to do with samples you can tell that subsurface scattering only has this parameter active and you can see this is not active this makes way more sense than you know the previous one if we also choose to look for something like color for example we can now see that we can find color related stuff within the render properties within the output properties within the view layer properties also within the default properties also within you know the object data properties and within the material properties and the best part is only the things that you need are active all right so it just it's just it's just interesting i kind of felt you know they were going to highlight these things obviously they might come up with something like that but right now the way this is is just mind-blowing so real quick, let's take a look at some other cool features. So if you remember, the Boolean is something that was fixed. So if you hold down shift and tap, you know, D on your keyboard, you can make a copy. And if you select any object, go over to your modifiers and add a Boolean right now, you can do an effective and nice looking Boolean directly in Blender. So they did a very nice job at fixing this and they didn't just fix the Boolean, guess what they did they added two different solvers so if we turn this to wireframe so you can see you can see we have a very nicely looking stuff so when it has to do with overlapping geometry and co-planner this handles this 
very very well now they didn't stop at doing these things you know for just object you can now use collections so if you select an object and drop this in a collection right click select another object or create another collection and drop this object inside that collection we can now select the object that has the boolean modifier and you can now switch from object to collections and now once you do that i can select this and select the collection three that i want to boolean so if you have like a couple of things and you want to boolean them and the existing collections you can just boolean all the way and while we're looking at the boolean thing that you can do we already talked about this update that once you press tab on your keyboard you notice that you have this so if you have any other geometry that exists within your outliner you can now click and switch from one object to the other and edit that object on the fly and this is going to save you time We've already talked about a lot of things with the outliner so you can check out our previous video you can right click right now within any of your collections right click and you can add some very cool stuff going on here so you can change the colors and that color affects the line or you know affects the hierarchy line that also exists with the outliner and we already talked about a pretty cool feature actually the reason why we're talking about this once right now is because most people may have forgotten so you can also select an object as it is and then add a modifier to this so let's clean out this modifier so let's throw in a subdivision modifier and you can copy that modifier across to a different object so if i also come over here and choose to throw in a wireframe i can choose to select the wireframe alone and apply just that wireframe to a different object altogether and whatever thing i do on the wireframe so if i scroll all the way down and i choose to increase the thickness it only exists here so it's not like you're creating an instance you're just making a copy and it's just intelligent to see that we have this thing right here so with a brand new scene here let's take a look at some other updates first things before we even talk about some things i would like to take your attention to the preference so the preference now has something that you know wasn't there before or should i say there was something there before in the preference that's no longer there so if you go over to experimental right now you notice they've taken out all of those beta stuff all of the hair particle thingy the things that has to do with point clouds all of those things that you know has to do with particles creations and stuff those things are totally out so now you will not be able to find them if you click over here you can't see them all those things that were within the experimental stage earlier that wasn't finalized they have been taken out hopefully they might come with the final version but for now you wouldn't be able to see them and that brings me to the point that if you select an object right now and you switch over to your sculpting section you will not be able to see some of your favorite sculpting tools that you may have seen that was teased earlier so maybe this will be coming with 2.92 or maybe the final version of 2.91 but for now these are things that you would not be able to see i also went ahead and i switched over to eevee and you get the whole eevee thingy happening which is great if you also switch over to shading and you click on the drop down button here you would also notice that we have the lock feature so the lock feature is still here so it's good to see that we still have that one you can do the whole blur thingy you can play with the world opacity you can play with this and you can unlock this if you also want to work with things like so so for now these are the updates that are now available within the sculpting section and with this let's dive back and see what we what we have and you know what you may have probably forgotten about so we have seen this one but i just want to bring it back to your attention that the beveling tool has now been updated for both text and also for curve so if you go over to the text section let's drag this all the way out and then you scroll all the way let's scroll all the way to where we have our geometry and you choose to extrude this you can now play with the bevel so if you increase the depth of the bevel this is not enough it is not enough you have to go to profile now you can easily create your own kind of bevel 
the way you want so this way you can have some very exciting looking bevels and if you want to play with the presets there are presets that are available that you can also play with the same thing goes for your curves so for example let's say you try to create a curve let's find one nice bezier curve right there and let's scale this one a bit like so beautiful so if we do that and we choose to extrude this we can get some pretty cool extrusions and then you can throw in some depth and of course this is going to open up a lot of possibilities i know for sure because once you press tab on your keyboard what you're dealing with are curves so you can grab a curve and you can just move this however you choose and at the end of the day you can create some fascinating stuff by just using curves so if you go over to your you know your profile right now you can increase the resolution of your profile you can increase this stuff as well and then you can use this to play with how this curve or you know this object right now because it's no longer a curve this geometry right now how it will be shaped at the end of the day so lovely looking things that we have going on here and for anyone who is trying to work with this stuff or for anyone that have probably forgotten that these features exist they are right here and you can actually grab them there are also some things that i will simply run through and talk to you guys about and one of them has to do with ev there is now a multi scatter ggx feature that is now there we already talked about the motion blur before and it's very cool to see that that motion blur feature is also happening directly in here we went ahead the last time and we talked about uh, we talked about the mesh to VDB. So we talked about the mesh to VDB and it's pretty cool. And just a few days back, we also talked about how you can work with both the displacement and how you can also convert volumes back to meshes. And this is exciting because now it opens a room for a lot of possibilities that can now happen with Blender. Sometime a few weeks ago, we talked about some features that had to do with the new image tracing that is available for the grease pencil. So you can now bring in your black and white images and you can trace them. But if you bring in a colored image, you're not going to get those colors back. Grease pencil has been in the works and there are a couple of things that are now available with the grease pencil. And we've also talked about some of them. There is also a brand new material option to set a holdout. And this allows to open holes in field areas. And we also did talk about some, some other cool feature for Grease Pencil sometime. So back here in Blender, let's see if we can get that one happening. So back here in Blender, if we just simply make a brand new scene, actually let's, uh, let's go over to Grease. So let's make a brand new uh, 2D animation stuff nice so if we make a brand new stuff like like so let's grab our pen and we choose to write the word sculpt for example what we talked about is now if you go over to edit go over to preference and go to your add-ons section just in case you missed this there is a, a brand new grease pencil tool option that is now here so once you select that and press n on your keyboard you can now see that there is a brand new grease pencil tool option and you can see there is an implementation for zooming in and zoom to fit and you can also click on the box transform to transform any part of your grease pencil and at the same time if you choose to draw a straight pencil so you let's press enter if you choose to draw a straight line sorry or a straight stroke and you notice that it's not straight you can now simply use the straight stroke to straight those things so the, we, we did a much more extensive video about that one so you could probably check the link in the description to see if you can find it and some of the few things which I would like to tell you guys before we go is with the keyframing. So there is also a brand new update to the keyframing and this deals with the new copy to select that can now be used with things that are animated directly here in Blender. So this one is a very interesting one for me and I can't wait to go ahead and try it. And there are also some pretty cool updates to constraints. I'm going to put a link in the description where you guys can go check it out. And finally, finally, before we leave, there is an update to cycles. So we talked about the fact that there is motion blur for Alembic rendering, that there is an overriding for compute device from the command line. But now there is a pretty cool update that the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series, which are the new Ampere cards, and now supported without runtime compilation for cycles. So this for me is something very, very interesting and pretty cool for anyone 
who already owns the Ampere card. So these are like the lovely, pretty cool updates. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can check out a lot of our previous you know, weekly updates and stuff about new features that are now in Blender. So just in case you wanna see them. And for those who are wondering about the weekly update, yes, there is also gonna be another weekly update this week. So simply keep your eye open for those ones. And hopefully sticking with the deadline and sticking with the whole thing that the guys at Blender Foundation have already shadowed, probably on the 24th of November, we will be getting the final release. So tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you liked this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's gonna be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.